let's talk about audience segments. So I just released a video last week, well, maybe two weeks ago, depending on when I released this video around how to make a campaign with just the latest and greatest usage of the Google UI in 2024. And there's been some changes. Um, and within that video, I talked about audience segments briefly. Uh, in the comment section, people asked for me to make a video about how to use audience segments appropriately in your Google search campaigns and how they can factor into just your overall strategy. So I'm in my Google testing environment account. Um, there's going to be a lot of just random red errors here because I don't use this account for anything but YouTube videos. I have an example of an office chair campaign, and I'm going to talk about how I could utilize audience segments to just get better results out of the campaign. Okay, so to navigate to the audience segments interface, you just click on audience on your left hand panel within an existing campaign. And then you click add audience segments. And then in my case, this is for all for office chairs. So I don't need to divvy this up by ad group, but you might if you are varying different completely different consumer segments per ad group, you might want to consider using different audience segments um, per persona or per, you know, product type or customer demographic. Um, but in my case, we're just trying to own certain terms around office chairs. So I'm going to do this at the campaign level. And now you're going to be presented with a bunch of things. Um, immediately, I want to talk about targeting versus observation. And now targeting is going to be something that a lot of people ask me about. And, and I think the tricky thing about targeting audiences is that you want to read this text, it narrows the reach of your campaigns to the selected segments. And so that's really important to consider because you can end up in trouble with Venn diagramming. And what I mean by Venn diagramming is, say you have 100 searchers per month um, on a given keyword, which is very common, especially for expensive or, or long tail keywords that you're targeting. If you only target the reach of your campaigns, for people that are, say, interested in office furniture, it could only be that five of those 100 people are actually interested in office furniture. It'd be one thing if, you know, 50, you know, you knew half of them were interested in furniture and the other half were interested in supplies. And you knew that people were that were interested in supplies were more interested in like replacing the wheels of their chair or something like that. And you just want to sell actual whole chairs. So you do furniture. But in my experience, it really turns out that, you know, you have 100 people and like seven are interested in furniture, five are interested in supplies, 17 have been tagged for furnishings, right? You know, 20 are for peripherals, and you don't know which of these actually converts better. And especially if you're new to an industry or you haven't used segments specifically within your industry before. And because of that, I recommend just typically in 99% of scenarios, even for me, um, using observation audiences. And the benefit of observation audiences is you can pretty much throw all these in here and they're not actually going to increase the cost of your campaigns and it doesn't narrow the reach of your bidding or, you know, how many people you show up for in search. But what it, what it will do is it's an observation, right? So if three people in your audience are within furniture, right, and you add it in. And you'll see that those segments are now part of the table that I expanded here. As data comes through, you will see clicks and impressions get attributed to these specific groups. And there will be cost here, but it's not extra cost. You're basically breaking up the pie of overall searchers that you're buying um, access to you know, serve your ads in front of. And it's going to divvy them up into specific audiences. So just like you're not paying anymore for like, people that are 18 to 24, 30, 25 to 34, that's just a data overlay, right? It's the same thing here. So you could have 30, 40, 50 audience segments just so that you could mine data about your search traffic, right? So in my case, you know, I would want to know more about not only the um, segments that could be affinity targeting, right? Um, or interests, like they're in market for office supplies, right? Um, and, and this comes from, you know, you know, the, the, this basically comes from purchasing 
decisions around office supplies. That's how they create this in-market segment. And so an in-market segment is a group of people that Google thinks are in market for a specific type of product or have at least recently been in market. It's not perfect, right? But in many cases, a, a strong percentage of that audience will actually be in market, right? Data is imperfect, but big data is pretty good. So typically in market segments can be great for observational audiences for you to just understand where the opportunities are within your specific segment. And especially, especially if you want to eventually expand into YouTube ads or another area where you're not going to have search data to devise your intent off of. So if you don't have search data, right, but you understand that, you know, 90% of your customers come from office supplies, for example, and this could be any word, right, that's associated with your business where people are in market for your products. That is huge for if you want to then go and do a YouTube campaign and you want to target people that are in market for office supplies. So that's how I use audience segments, but there's a few other ways that you can also use them that are really common. So this is in the search, right? So this is search, or you could do a new segment and there's a lot more that you could do here. You could use data based on your customer list and do almost like a retargeting um, sort of ad, uh, but that gets tricky with search, right? You could do people that interacted with your channel. You could do a Google Analytics 4 segment. You could do a lead form segment. That can be helpful, but it's a lot more advanced. You really need to know what you're doing there. Otherwise, it's going to get super complicated, super fast. But you could also go to the Browse tab, and there's a lot of other options here. So we looked at mostly in-market audiences. There's also affinity audiences, which can be more for, for example, you know, if you're from a gaming company, and you want to target more people that are, you know, you're, you're, it's an MMORPG game and you want to target people that are interested generally in MMOs and then serve to those people, you know, that can be a good way to use, for example, an affinity, affinity audience. Um, there could also be opportunities around, you know, parental status or marital status. Um, there's a lot of, you know, potential overlays that could be relevant. Um, but then you could also do an observational audience. And this is what I do regularly is if they've interacted with my business. So this is a dummy account, so it doesn't have any of this data, but you know, for many accounts, it will have, um, basically visitor data, transaction data, and you can put those as observational audiences, or you could even end up excluding them from your search ads. Um, because, you know, they're, they're people that are already within your fold and likely going to convert anyways. So why spend, you know, another three or five or $10 on a click on that visitor audience of people that are already aware of your brand, whereas you could be just using your top of funnel act activity to capitalize on net new users. So I hope this kind of makes sense how I talk through audience segments and I can definitely go more in depth in a future video about, about this, but I just wanted to get the main use cases knocked out because people were really curious about it. And I think most people's use cases are going to be pretty basic. The main ideas here are to basically overlay specific in market segments that you think are really high quality for your products. And then you put them on an existing search campaign that either you want to understand more about or you're launching a new campaign with best practices either way and then you use that to give you more information about how you could scale up in the future on other channels um, that's that's the main way that i would use this um, there's there's of course other ways and i'm sure you know any different really good search marketer is going to have their own proprietary way of using audience segments but i just use them at a really high level and then use that to inform how I'm going to scale other channels. So I hope this is really helpful. Um, let me know in the comment section below if there's anything else that you want more data about. I'll do another one of these quick videos. Just whenever I see comments or questions that people are asking, always happy to just dive in and let you know how I'm thinking about this stuff. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for watching and we'll talk.